This is a University of Otago podcast. Hello and welcome to Otago University Vote Chat 2011. Vote Chat is a series of conversations with politicians. We're filming this live in uh, the media production studios at the University of Otago in front of a live audience. And we're trying to do things a bit differently here during this election campaign, trying to get a bit of interactivity going with our politicians. So it's a conversation here um, up front, but we're also trying to get the audience to participate. Um, whether it's heckling or tweeting or whatever, because we're using a, um, the Twitter um, sphere today. The hashtag is OUVoteChat2011. So people in the audience or um, out there beyond in the Twitter sphere can inter uh, interrupt, I was going to say <laughs> interact, um, or interrupt and ask questions themselves, which I'll put <coughs> to our guest today. And of course, this is being filmed to go yeah, live out on the internet, but also to go up on iTunes and on YouTube. Okay, so today we're lucky enough to have the MP for ha Hamilton West, uh, Tim McIndoe. Now, I won't give you a big introduction because I think a lot of the things um, I would say are going to come out during our whole conversation. Um, so first, I'm just going to go straight into talking about the fact that you used to be a student radical. <laughs> well, g'day, Bryce. Good to, good to be back in yeah. Dunedin. Yes, I'm proudly wearing my OUSA tie. This was, means that I was a member of the executive in 1982 when I was the research and action officer. Wow, and, so you... Uh, it was a year after the Springbok tour, so there was still quite a lot of volatility this on This must the have been the time of Michael Laws. It was, Michael Laws and Chris Trotter. Uh, yeah. They were two... You remember uh, them from I there? remember them well, yeah. Okay. yeah they, they used to go hammer and tongs at each other in critical And where were time. you in this? Uh, probably in the middle, you know, that's, you know, when you're a sort of centre-right politician, you sit there. But um, yeah, it was certainly an interesting time to be in Dunedin. Right. Uh, you know, so immediately you, post Springbok tour. Okay, so you're on the student executive for a year. Yeah, and, I was. Um, I was at Knox in 1980 and 81. I was vice president at Knox in 81, and then in 82, uh, got my Knox friends to vote for me because <laughs> you didn't need to get many people out in those days, and you got on. Well, I think I think I was the days. only candidate, and I narrowly beat no confidence. <laughs> oh, really? So, do you remember how many votes you got? Oh, roughly a few hundred. Okay, uh, it was a by-election, oh, so really? it wasn't the full thing. I, okay, um, yeah, yep. I can't remember why the by-election came about, but um, somebody. Stopped and I got the job. And so were you a nat back then? Were you like a, uh, no. a young nat? I probably nat? was a nat when I arrived in Dunedin, but I don't think you can be a student in Dunedin and remain a nat the whole time. <laughs> so, We've yeah, got a few in the audience yeah, here. I know, so, yeah, I'm very, um, be, very be careful impressed. what you say. I probably uh, veered a little bit left in my student days as most... Oh, uh, you really were a bit of a student As radical. most students did. Oh, no, 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 I was never a radical. No, no. I used to annoy the really hard left guys by not being radical enough. Okay. So Clive so, Matthewson was around in those days okay. and got to know Clive... Uh, you know, oh, okay, I mean, he's gone from left to right and backwards and forwards. Quite well, a bit himself. You know, if, if you're a stick around in politics yeah. for long enough, you probably don't remain in a constant line. Actually, all the time. Uh, we'll get on to this, but you were in a party with him, of course, weren't you? I was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. and he okay. the, formed the in, initial United Party. You've done yeah. your homework. Yeah, I've done my homework. So, <laughs> a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, but going back, sticking back to that 90, early 1980s, so, yeah. I mean, your, your leader can't remember whether he was for or against the tour or what he did. Can, yeah. did what about you? I was soft anti tour. Okay. And when I say soft, I must admit I didn't get out and protest to do anything about that. But, but you I disapproved. In my heart, I didn't believe it was the right thing. I think it was doing a lot of damage to the country at the time. And but looking, you snuck along to a looking game? Back, I did go along and protest in 85 when the Cavaliers oh, were okay. um, having their tour. Because by that stage I thought, no, you've actually got to stand up for what you believe in. Um, and you know, my family was divided, as were most at the time. Um, it wasn't that I was anti-rugby, far from it. I love rugby and I'm really enjoying the Rugby World yeah. Cup at the moment. But at so, the time, I just felt that uh, it wasn't the right thing. We'd had all sorts of upheaval during the 1970s. And, um, now, so at the stage, say, were you from the Waikato? Area? No, I was from Auckland oh, originally. Okay. Came down okay. to Dunedin from Auckland. Okay. Didn't okay. go to the Waikato until 18 years ago now. Okay, and you, uh, you did an arts degree, didn't you, in history? I did arts right? and part of a law degree. Uh, okay. I started my law degree down here and finally finished it 30 years later up right. in the Waikato. <laughs> okay, so why did you do history? I loved history. Always yeah. been really interested in history and politics. Um, yeah. Probably grew up in a, I certainly grew up in a National Party family and heard my parents talking politics a lot. Visitors to our home used to have great debates over who should be the leader of the National Party back in yeah. the 60s and all the rest of it. And it was just sort of in the blood. I remember being particularly interested at the time that Norman Kirk died, when I was um, 13 at the time. Yeah. And even though I was 
at that stage, sort yeah. of just developing a political inclination and was probably national, I thought, yeah, this is quite a significant event for New Zealand and right. had made an impact in so the short time. So we talk about the funeral when the... Uh, yeah, and I watched the funeral and, yeah. and thought this is a big event for New Zealand and from then on I guess I always had in mind, one day I want to be there. I, I looked at the funeral, the cortege coming out of, yeah. down the front steps of Parliament and I remember thinking, I want to work there. Wow, okay. Yeah. So you've had your eye on the prize for yeah, a long time. Yeah, it took a while. It took a while. Some people have that quick... Yeah, uh, Perth. Five? I took a while. Five, five elections. Five goes to get into power. Okay, and you finally made it. Congratulations. Yeah, we're about to have our sixth MMP election. Yep. And I've been a candidate in every one of them. Wow. And I'm a first term MP. Okay, great. So, so uh, this history degree, what sort of area we, was there? A uh, political area? history. I remember. Political do, history, I yeah, in my fourth year when I was doing the BA Honours course, I remember doing a fascinating study on the 1914 election in Otago. Wow. And, uh, okay. <laughs> so you're How much do you want to know about it? I don't know, but you're, 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 so you're actually quite a political geek. Oh, you're yeah. a real political geek. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, guilty. Guilty okay. as charged. And, you, uh, and didn't Michael Callan teach you as well? He did. Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah, he taught me. Actually, I have to say it was one of the more boring papers I did, but he... can be rather dry. It, it was but, demographic uh, history, uh, and he was the candidate for Dunedin South at that stage, okay. and <laughs> left at the end of 81 to, when he got into Parliament, took over from a fellow named Brian McDonnell, if I remember rightly. Okay. Um, Gee. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he, he was one. Uh, Tom Brooking, who's still around, yep. taught me in the history department. Um, yeah, I remember some very good lecturers here. I loved my time at Otago. Harry Morton. Um, so I, I was in the history department, but always with an interest in political history. Okay. But, uh, John Omer Cooper was the head of the department. Just oh, great yep. people. Great yep. people. But uh, all names to the audience here. W where did you live? Uh, well, the first two years I was at Knox. Oh, yeah, that's right. uh, I'd actually done my first year at Oto at Auckland, and right. transferred down here. Yep. So from the second and third year I was at Knox, and then my fourth year I was in Carroll Street. And those days were very oh, unusual okay. not to live r around the university. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, with, I mean, Carroll Street's sort of between the Octagon and the Exchange, and so that sort of seemed to be like going to the to Stewart Island. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it has a sort of reputation um, as being sort of an unsavoury part of Dunedin. Oh, we um, dignified it. Yeah. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, yeah, raised the tone. It was just not a student area. No. And people, we had a great flat, six bedroom house, really enjoyed it. Okay. So where was your local pub? Or did you not drink? Uh, oh, no, no, I drank. <laughs> I think you're going to come back to that topic. <laughs> yeah. uh, mainly in the Guardies. Wow, that's a long trip Well, to make when from... I was in Knox. No, no, oh, when yeah, I was yeah, in yeah, Knox. Yeah, and then yeah. I suppose in the, uh, probably Captain Cook, I'm trying to remember uh, okay. what the names of the pubs were. So, so how do you feel? I think that... is there a pub called The Exchange? I might have popped in there once or twice. Oh, I'm um, sure there was, probably. But, uh, yeah, I, I remember many happy evenings in the Gardies. So, any sense of regret or. My great regret is that, that the Gardies closed just, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was actually in the Gardies last year on their final night. Just really? Oh, did you come especially down? No, I didn't get... No, no. I, <laughs> I'm yeah. not that cynical. Uh, no, I, forget, I was down here. F I had um, some meetings in Dunedin that day and uh, thought, wow, this is uh, an ending of an era. So I wow, pop well. in just for a short time. Saw Josh Cronfeld when I was in Oh, there. yes. Yeah, yep. and, so you been on your couches at night? Uh, no, I didn't. Uh, no. I find that's not really career enhancing uh, when you're <laughs> a, a government backbencher. Oh, it would do well for your student vote or something. Probably um, would, but, but I don't actually pick up a lot of votes in Dunedin North. <laughs> but what about in Hamilton West? Is, where's the university? At, uh, it's in Hamilton East on the other side oh, of the okay, river. But so a lot of the really students flat on my, uh, on my side of the river. And we've got two campuses of Wintech, the Polytech up there. Okay. And they're both in my electorate. So there's a lot of students in Hamilton. F rapidly growing city. Okay, but back to this couch burning. Yeah, very, 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 very interesting I think it's more your uh, um, line than mine, Bruce. Uh, I've, I've, I've never been one in my life. No, I, I, um, but, sorry um, to disappoint you, but yeah, I'm, I. I'm a bit disappointed too that I haven't. But um, uh, is it such a bad thing? Because we had, um, I think it was, was it David Cunliffe. Yeah. Um, uh, he was saying, oh, a bit of couch burning, probably not a big problem on the side, you know, we can't endorse it, but, you know, yeah. uh, what do you think? How much? Uh, no, no, I'm not really going to endorse it either. I think. Um, you know, I, to be I, honest, I, I guess what I'm talking about is uh, uh, couch burning as a symbol of all these big student parties yeah, that uh, yeah. kind of looked down upon by know, the university. It's a bit of a beat up, so isn't forth. it? I mean, there so you think it's a bit of a beat? Well, I don't think that there weren't many couches being burnt in my time. We couldn't afford it. You know, we weren't the sort of wealthy students that you've got today. You know? Okay. But what, what about... Uh, oh, well, we must get on to the drinking yeah. stuff. Yep, okay. You, you want to stop students uh, drinking, I'll, is that I'll right? I'll have, have a glass of vodka. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
You want to stop the students no, drinking? No, I don't want to stop students drinking, but uh, you, what you're getting on to is the fact I've tabled an amendment to raise the drinking age back to 20, which, yeah. um, so not the drinking age, the purchase, the purchase age, I should make that clear. And that's not going to win me many friends with the student audience, so I'll sort of look out of there and dodge the tomatoes now as yeah. they come. Um, it was 20 when I was a student, and I have to admit that I had many, many hours as an 18 and 19 year old in the Guardies, and the police never bothered us at all. I mean, in those days, you didn't have to show ID. It was a lot easier. Uh, my main concern, though, is um, I don't want to stop 18 and 19 year olds drinking, but I do think that we need to take on board the significant problem we've got with alcohol consumption. I mean, we, we do have a real problem with alcohol abuse in New Zealand. Absolutely. And I'm not saying but it is confined to 18 nine, and 19 year olds, of course it's not. It's much wider than that. But we have a huge problem and in my electorate it, we see it every Friday and Saturday night. Sure, but just it, to clarify this, mm -hmm. you want to raise it to the purchase age to 20, but yes. you, you said something about you don't want to stop 18 and 19 year olds being able well, to drink. Well, I'm think not that, quite sure what you mean. Well, it, it's certainly possible for younger people to drink socially. I mean, for instance, I believe that the most responsible way of young people learning to drink is by being introduced to alcohol when their and parents deem it to be appropriate and that might happen when they're 15 or 16. I mean I remember my old man giving me a few beers yeah. when I was younger but it was under supervision. Now by the time you get to, to being a student you're away from home and I appreciate that the circumstances you are can. different um, but there's, you're not going to stop young people getting hold of alcohol. I mean every student flat in Dunedin will have some alcohol in it and you'll be having a good time and as long as you're using it responsibly, I don't have a problem with that. But we have to have a, a limit somewhere, right. we have to have a benchmark, and the problem so that we've got at the moment is that by having a purchase age of 18, we've got a lot of 18 year olds who are purchasing alcohol and supplying it to 15, 16 and 17 year olds. Right. And with, particularly with the 15 and 16 year olds, you've got a major problem there. Right, so the, so the idea is keep it at 20, allow a bit of um, drinking under that age, as long as they're not purchasing it themselves. Well, it's going to happen. Um, You've got to be realistic. It's, okay. going, to, it's going to happen. Um, and I mean, I'm certainly sympathetic to the arguments that I've got many times. I get a bit of abuse on Facebook over this, and people say, well, if I'm old enough to vote and I'm old enough mm. to die from a country, yeah. why on earth shouldn't I buy, buy, buy a beer? And that's a very powerful argument. Yeah. Uh, I accept that. But as I say, you've got to have a limit somewhere. And the thing that's really motivating me is the fact that in my city, and I'm sure it's true in every part of the country, Every Friday, Saturday night, and early hours of Saturday and Sunday morning now, we have a huge number of young people who are getting themselves into big trouble. A lot of them are ending up in the emergency mm. department of our hospital. We're getting a lot of uh, sure. young women getting pregnant. They had no intention of having any sexual encounter. The next thing they're getting pregnant. The worst time to conceive a child is when you're heavily intoxicated. And so there are all sorts of problems. Sure. My amendment won't stop all of that, okay. but it is about listening to the community concern that I'm getting, particularly from the health workers and the police. Okay.